So the typical question, uh, we've got a pulley. Um, so pulley here. Uh, it says a box of mass is on a horizontal table. So a box here. Okay, it's connected by a string to our pulley. And then, then from our pulley, we've got another particle hanging here. string okay um that this box has a mass of 0 0.8 kg uh, 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 the other end is a string to b which has a mass of 1.2 kilograms read it below the magnitude of frictional force in a and b is f the system is released from rest of the string tool after release b descends descends a distance of 0 0.9 meters and it does that in 0 0.8 seconds right so modeling a and b as particles calculate the acceleration of b we can just do that uh, that's easy b easy c easy the part that basically causes confusion is the last part so sphere B is 0 0.9 meters above the ground when the system is released. Given it doesn't reach the pulley and the frictional force remains constant throughout, find the distance traveled by A. So A is going to go towards the pulley, but it's not going to hit the pulley. Right, so what happens? Well, the first thing, if this goes down by 0 0.9, that means that A is going to get dragged by 0 0.9. So first of all, we've got to remember it travels at it travels 0 0.9 meters. That's the first part. Now the second part is where B hits the ground, but A is still moving. So what do we need to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is find out how fast A is going, and then we can work out how long it takes to slow down. So uh, we need to find the final velocity of V. So that's V. Okay, it's released from rest. So that means that U was zero. Uh, we worked out in part B that acceleration was 45 over 16. Now remember, basically, this is why we need things in fractions and thirds. We need an exact answer, otherwise, we get round numbers. And it's moving for 0 0.8 seconds. Okay, that's basically for the first part. So then we find that that gives us a velocity of 9 over 4 meters per second. Right, so that's the speed that B is moving. Okay, so now, now we look at A. We say that A um, is moving at this speed at the beginning. So the first thing we do is we say that let's go in let's go in this direction. What forces are acting on A? Well, there's minus friction. Okay, there's no more tension because B has hit the ground. And that is equal to our mass is 0 0.8 times A. Okay. Now, the frictional force you found in part C, so that means that I've got minus 1227 over 200, and that's equal to 0 0.8 A. So then I can find that A is equal to negative one two two seven over one six zero or about seven point six six meters per second per second. Right, so now I've got A, I've got the speed that B was moving at, so that's gonna be our initial speed for A. 
And now I can put that all together. So if I use v squared equals u squared plus 2as, right, so the speed that it's going at the end okay, is zero because it's stopping. Then I've got the initial speed, which was the velocity the b was moving at in the beginning. So I've got 9 over 4 squared plus 2 times. Now the acceleration was what we just found. That's minus 1, 2, 2, 7 over 160. And then s, which is my unknown. And then when I work all of this out, I'll find that s is equal to 0 0.33 meters. So that's my part two. So I have to do part two plus part one, which is 0 0.9 plus 0 0.33. Oops, not zero, plus. And that gives me a total of 1.23 meters. And that's my final answer for D. So remember, in these questions, we answer A, we ask B, we answer C, then we have new conditions. Okay. Now, as we said before, there's two parts. We've got part one, which is when B is moving, B stops, and then we have part two where A continues. And don't forget, often we need to stop, draw a new diagram, or work out a new acceleration because acceleration changes because the resultant forces have changed.